All right, so it's been two years and I've got more tattoos. So I guess we should just go through. So welcome back if you've been subscribed for the duration. Uh, apologies for going missing again, which is what I regularly do, because I've got no consistency in uploading, but it just is what it is. It just is what it is. With all this isolation shit going on at the minute, I hope everyone's staying safe and you know washing their hands and not venturing outside their house for anything other than essentials. But one of my videos has been getting a bit more traction than it would have ever done before. If you've seen it before, you'll know what it is. It's the talking about my tattoos two years ago when I had about 20 odd. So since that point, I've carried on getting tattoos every couple of months. And we're now on 40 odd. There's been a lot go on since that point. So what I thought I'd do is, seeing as though that's getting a fair few views in a minute, we'll go through what I've got now, what's changed and what stupid ones I've got since then. I don't know if it's a start off where I left off or I'll just carry on from there. I'll carry on from the point I was at on that video. So if you've not seen it, I'll put a link somewhere, go and watch that and then come back. Or you can watch this one first and then go and view that to see what I've missed. So I did that whole arm on the last video, bar. I started exactly where I left off. So the next one after that was the panther with the dagger, where he said. Now, I got that done in Barcelona. No, I didn't. I'm full of shit. I got that done at Tooth and Talon by Harriet Heath. There's a full video on this one on my channel. It's called Barcelona and Tattoos or something like that. I'll put a link to it. So that was the next one that I got. And I was going to Barcelona the week after or the day after or whatever it was, which is where I got Fergu, the Mr. Potato Head looking fucking don't know what. Fergu is the only name I've got for him because the tattoo artist is called Fergu. So this is what I stuck with. It's essentially, I don't know what it is. I really don't. The only, I can just describe it as like a Mr. Mistake where that's melting. That's the only way I've got to describe that tattoo. I love it. I think it's fucking mega. So I think I then got these nails by Chameleon Tattoo, uh, who now works at Tooth and Town in Manchester. Um, shout out Cam for doing them. These were just done to fill these stupid gaps that I had on my arm. Kind of look like a bit of sperm. I won't lie about it, they do. But they're there now, and I mean, that's it, innit? There's no change in it. Following that, I got. Do you know what? There's that many that I forget where I want to and what I got next, and da 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 da. Pain in the ass. I'll start on this arm, we'll work the way up then on that. Then there was the Geisha by Butcher Man's Sap. Geisha? Geisha. Geisha, that. Geisha. I think it's Geisha. Fuck it. That was done by Butcher Man Sam at Tattoo Tea Party in Manchester. I've just realised that a lot of my tattoos are done at conventions. A shitload of them. Mad. I'll link every artist down in the description so you can have a look at any. If you like any of the specific tattoos, then you can go and have a look at their work. They're all up and down the UK. Some abroad, so depending on where you are, you might be able to get to one or a few of them. Oh shit, I missed one. That one next. So I've got an eagle done in New York at Three Kings by. Bear with. So it was done by a guy called, I'm sure it was pronounced Shed, um, and his Instagram's at normal tattoos. So I flew out to New York for a week and I knew full well that I wanted to get a tattoo whilst I was there. So I'm wandering around Brooklyn and I spot Three Kings. We go in, I'm like, I want to get a tattoo. I'm happy to pick Flash, anything off the walls. You know, I want something truly American. So we went with American Eagle and American Flag, and it's fucking mega. It's one of my favourites. Up there on my list is one of the best ones I've got because it's just everything about the tattoos. It just encompassed into one. Sick. So then, um, to tie that up, I got a Sailor Jerry flash piece on the top of my arm, which is like the dagger of the snake and the lady head. That was done by Lee Carley in Chester. He now owns Lover's Tattoo. So if you're that side, anywhere around Chester, way, Wales, he's your man for all his traditional stuff. He's fucking solid. We then went to Tattoo Tea Party again, the year after, and I challenged Josh Kent with doing my elbow. Now, if you've been to a convention, you'll understand how fucking hectic we are and there's just so much going on. There's people coming left, right, centre, everywhere. There's music going, it's usually cold and I decided I wanted my elbow doing there and the challenge is to tell you how to do it. Now, the gap was fucking ridiculous. Fair play to Josh, he managed to do it. He got this snake in there. Now, Josh does like half colour, half grey. Now, it just didn't work on my skin. It went minging, it just didn't look right and it didn't heal right. Partially my fault, now I was away the day after and I didn't have anything to heal it with, I didn't have any 
tattoo goo, it didn't have the pan film, it didn't have anything along those lines. So I got some cocoa butter from a shop, super drug to be precise. Now, me and my infinite wisdom didn't think anything of it, but having applied this fucking cream to my arm, my newly tattooed arm, I'm like, that's really itching. Bear in mind, I'm in, sat in some coffee shop now, my heart's ending nowhere. That's really fucking itching. And so I'm reading the ingredients, and tiny as you like, like fucking this big, it says almonds. And I'm like, great. So I've got a nut allergy. In this coffee shop, with a new tattoo, with fucking almond cream and oil on my arm, going fucking ballistic, in the toilet, fretting, sweating, red, in this sink that was no bigger than this. And my elbow just didn't fit, and I'm just trying to get it all off. So, yeah, that kind of fucked it. So that's had a few touch-ups on it, and yeah, it's all a bit mad, but all my fault for going one convention and two putting almond oil in it. Fucking idiot. Then I flew back, when I flew back from New York, so when I flew back from New York, I'm fully on a different timeline here, but we're gonna have to go with it. So when I flew back from New York, I knew that I wanted to get more than my arms and legs tattooed, so I started to think about what I wanted on my chest. Jimmy, who had already done my peacock on this arm, and if you want to see this properly, then the video is on my channel. Jimmy, who'd done this, Peacock, just mad colour. Like, the colour just stayed. More than any tattoo that I've got, it's just so vibrant. It's been in there for years and it's just stuck. So I knew he was the man to take on my front. So, drove down to Bristol from here in Manchester. Drove all the way there to Skin Deep. Started for the finest. Sit for a bit, get it fucking done, whatever. And he lined it. Oh my God, I've never felt anything like it in my life. People who say that tattoos don't hurt are full of shit. It was minging. Absolutely minging, all there. And then the sides here, just oh, vile, absolutely vile. I'm not gonna lie, I tapped them like, Jimmy mate, there's no way I'm doing any more of this. We ain't colouring it, we ain't shading it, it's not happening. Drove back to Manchester. A few weeks later, I thought, right, let's get it finished. Drove back up to Bristol this time, got it all filled in, colour, shading, a lot, sorted, finished. Amazing. Thank fuck that's over, drove back to Manchester. Now, halfway back, I'm like, nah, this isn't working. My head is shoved firmly up my arse at this point. So we stop at services somewhere. So I decided it would be a fantastic idea to wear a grey t-shirt when you're getting tattooed. I stopped at services and just passed out for like three hours. Woke up having bled all over my chest, just all over this fucking white t-shirt. And I'm like, I need to eat before I go anywhere. I can't do anything. So I'm walking into these services and I swear everyone thought I'd been shot. It was mental. Like every person's like, and I'm like, I've just been tattooed, like, chill. I miss shot, it's not a mad knife fucking axe man outside. Bonnie! You've shot Bonnie! So that was that, so we finished my chest and I avoided it for a long time, a very long time. So after that I had a pretty mad gap up the back of my arm here and Lee's Tattoo Expo was on which is a class expo if you're on like that side of England. So Leeds was on and I've always wanted to get tattooed in Milan. Don't really know why, but it's just been one of them places that I've wanted to get tattooed. It just really enticed me to go as well. So when I saw Samuel Tabazzi from Milan was tattooing in Leeds, I thought, right, I'm gonna have to go and get something. He put this weird like box laid in the back of my arm, which I've always like had a screenshot of something similar on my phone for years. He had one of these in his flash and I was like, I want that and it's just a sick job. It's up there as one of my favourites. I'm gutted it's on the back of my hand because I can't see it and nobody can really see it, but it is what it is. It's there, I know it's there, it's mega, I think it's class. If you like Samuel's work, go get tattooed off him if you're in Milan. Straight after that at Leeds, I went round the corner to Ben Roberts and got these four dice tattooed in the bottom of my wrist to fill that gap. Now, this is based on the Ian Brown song, Fear. If you haven't heard that, then go listen to it. It's fucking mental, like he does. Every lyric sort of starts, every sentence of the lyric, I can't even explain it. Every lyric has F-E-A-R at the start of every word. So, for everything a reason, forget everything to remember, all sorts. So, go and have a listen to that. But yeah, Ben Roberts did this, and then we had a little game of dice at the end of it. And I lost, evidently. So then, then I went to Magaluf. <laughs> I got two ridiculously bad tattoos over there on my legs, thankfully. And it's Hakuna Matata, even though I've never seen The Lion King, don't ask. And then I got Just Chill on my fucking knees. Now, I wrote these with a biro on a napkin. So, I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, mega funny. But, yeah, they're not good. They're not good. But having said that, I was going to talk about, like, tattoo regret in this video. But I might save it for another video about how I deal with it and how everyone else deals with it. So I'll save that for them. Just chill and Hakuna Matata. I remember waking up having had 
Kuna with a tattooed on the back of my legs the night before with a severe hangover and severe anxiety and just wondering what the fuck I was going to do about it. Now I hoped that by going in the sea and the pool and completely disobeying everything about healing a tattoo, which isn't clever, I don't recommend it, but I thought that maybe potentially they might sort of wash out a little bit, like the one on the top of my leg did. They didn't. They stayed in there solid. So fair play to the tattoo artists because they're in there and they don't show any sign of like wearing away. And I don't really want to get their tattooed again because it's gnarly and I can't be asked getting there done again. So for the time being, they're there until I have the guts to put like a cobweb or a spider over it or something along those lines, something heavily black. So now we're, now we're on the start of this year and at the start of this year, I left my full-time job to go and work for myself. Now, having left my full-time job, I sort of felt a bit more freedom and decided that I wanted to finish off my arms, do my shoulders and potentially start like lower on my neck, which is exactly what I did. So I got these cobwebs over both sides of my shoulders to finish off the tops of my sleeves. They're something that I've wanted since I started getting tattoos on my arms and I knew that when I'd finished that they was gonna be like the final piece of tie together. I am not finished fully on my arms yet. I've still got a few gaps and fillers to do and then sort of black in between everything else. So they're not entirely 100% finished, but they're finished enough that I can go, right, let's get the cobwebs done now. I then got these sort of like flowers over the tops of my shoulders and onto my chest and they need work. I'm not gonna lie, they do. Um, I got them on there and I was happy with them at the time. Now I look at it and I'm potentially thinking that I need to fill them with something, maybe like extended leaves coming off them so that they're not as just one, two, three, four, and plonked on my chest. That's one of the things that we work on, and as I film the front up, maybe something will come of them and we'll pad them out a little bit. And then I got the two roses down the lower of my neck, and I can honestly say that was the easiest tattoo I've ever had in my entire life. I'm sat there, wincing and squirming around like this is gonna be mega painful, and he started, and it would piss easier. Honestly, easier. That was probably on par with, like, there if not easier than like the socks of your arms. I can't really complain about it. So if you are thinking about getting like round ears done and you're worried about how much it's gonna work, don't be. It's nice, it's, actually, it's not nice. That's the wrong thing to say. It's really not nice, it's it's still minging. But it's nowhere near as bad as any of the others that I've had. And you're able to sit through without any numbing cream, I just recommend that you do the normal procedure of eating, keeping your sugars up and having a good meal before you go in. So yeah, I think that's pretty much where we're at for the time being. Like I said, if you've not watched the previous video, I list everything else that I've got on this arm and my legs in that video so the link will be in the description or i'll try and put them little fucking tag things up here if you've enjoyed the video then don't forget to hit the thumbs up button because it seems to really help with the algorithm on youtube these days yeah that's it thank you for watching if you want to subscribe then you can hit that subscribe button there's gonna be more tattoo stuff coming with us all being isolated i want to just make some content and just like give people something to watch whilst we're all stuck inside and gives me something to do so if you want to know anything else about like tattoos or how I heal my tattoos or picking tattoo designs, then just let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them all. I might compile them all into a video, but yeah. Again, thank you for watching and I hope you like my tattoos. I'll see you next time.